these farm updates <laughs> they keep getting further apart but here we are if you were here on my channel last winter i spent a lot of time figuring out how to feed my yearlings grain <laughs> i don't love doing processed foods <laughs> for my family i try my best to carry the same mindset to the farm but to follow up with where I left off last winter, I prefer to feed only barley four times a day. And last year that worked really well for my particular set of calves. I had improvements in everyone's body condition and then we went right into spring, they started eating grass and then I cut the grain out completely since we've had a little bit more rain. I have enough pasture, <laughs> that chicken. girl. I have enough pasture to give them a pretty big paddock and let them forage, but not enough pasture to completely cut out hand grain. What? They also don't agree with cutting out all the grain. Thank you, Miller. I took a step back from just doing the barley. We've been doing a mix of corn and barley plus mill run, which kind of just some byproducts I think of like of different types of wheat or grain products. And I've also tried going back to dairy texture, which is about nine cents a pound more, which actually adds up, believe it or not. But all that has done is confirm for me that I love just feeding barley four times daily. This is becoming more relevant with my calves because all of them are weaned now. I want to make sure that we're supplementing that protein. Pickle and Hero already being weaned for quite a bit of time. They were the first ones to have some changes in body condition. Hero and Pickle definitely had that pot belly appearance where they're just huge and round. I believe feeding their portion of grain to times daily causes some issues with digestion. When I portion it out throughout the day, I think it makes grain more digestible for them rather than getting hit with the grain all at once. The bread dairy heifers are also on the same schedule along with our bull. They of course are all doing great. My bread jerseys, I don't know what it is. They just keep their body condition. They do not have an issue. <laughs> Part of that I think is because they have New Zealand grazing genetics and I think they were genetically designed to just do better foraging and I am adding grain to their diet. Honestly, like if I had a way to separate them, I probably wouldn't even give them grain because they do fine on just hay. Same goes for my uh, Fleck v. Holstein cross Delilah. Really the only ones that are finicky when it comes to grain is my purebred Holstein and my Dutch belted Jersey cross. Cassie is the most sensitive to diet changes. So something I do notice about Cassie is that she does amazing when she's able to supplement with any grass. That makes huge improvements in her, in her body condition. She also is the most sensitive to whether or not I feed grain two times or four times daily. I notice that conditions for her get too acidic pretty easily. And there's two times that she's had the best body condition and that's either purely being on grass or the four times a day barley with hay. When I divide the calves feedings into four servings, I do a pound per calf. So this should equate to four pounds of grain per calf daily. All the boys are eating. I can't, oh, look who it is. She's already waiting for food. Some there. Hi, baby. These girls finally stopped attacking me for bottles. They were definitely the most rough. I don't have a bottle. I don't have a bottle. You're so cute. She's doing really good. She's doing really good. I've been really happy with these two. They've just been really healthy, spunky. They eat good, they've been easy to wean. The pigs have learned how to get into the duck pool. Are you a duck? Luna Lisa's doing good. He had a fever um, pretty close when I first got him and he lost a lot of fur and it is finally starting to grow back. Cow yard is closed off and I'll show you that in just a minute. My husband custom made me some feeders these flaps here on the barn open up. Well, that way all I have to do is come over here and dump the grain in, which is so much safer for me. Um, these are just offering a little bit more support. Not really that one, I guess. That's been a scratching post, but 
That one seems to be a little bit more practical. It does allow for more space rather than crowding. It doesn't hang off the edge like these, but you know, using what we have, we're not spending a bunch of extra money. We actually have the chickens out in the cow yard right now. I'll explain that more in a moment. But first, I gotta turn some bedding. All right, so you guys saw the cow yard. Here's the inside of the barn. <laughs> Most of the birds are outside, but we do have this spot open for the chickens and then the cow yard open for the chickens. Um, we actually need to start cleaning out this bedding from the inside of the barn, but it is very compacted. And we also ran out of pasture that the cows have been on for the chickens. So the chickens go behind the cows. We do that so that way the chickens help us control flies. And they also help spread out the manure patties so that way they are absorbed more quickly into the ground. Um, this just seemed to make perfect sense to let them be here for a little bit. They also break up the manure that's out in the cow yard. They help control the flies out here for us. They've been turning up all of this bedding and dust bathing in it. It's gonna be easier for us to shovel this stuff out, hopefully. Best case scenario, we're still gonna have to do this either way. Our yard for cows and now chickens have both served as a spot to take a break off pasture. The cows are currently out in the backfield, so in about a week, these chickens can then go back out to pasture. And there's another view of the cow yard. We had a lot of hay out here that the cows just bling around and it gets pretty wet underneath. So it's also been nice to have the chickens turn some of this up. We've had some sunny days, so this will actually help dry a lot of this out too. This is what we're working with right now. I made a pretty large paddock, in my opinion, compared to what I usually do, just to give them enough space to hopefully make this last a week. I do realize there's not a ton of forage here, but I think there's enough to at least supplement some of their food. They have made two hay bales now last two days, so that's impressive. I was going through about two a day. Um, they're still getting some grain just to keep those bellies full. I do like the pasture to be a lot more recovered. However, I made this call because I felt that it would be more beneficial for them to be peeing and pooping out here rather than in their shelter, <laughs> which is less work for me. But also this field needs the nutrients and that to me is actually more important than them actually foraging. That's just kind of a side effect of them, hopefully helping this field improve. Not to mention, they're just so much more happy outside. <laughs> it was definitely necessary to put them away for a little bit just to buy some time because I do care about the health of my field and I don't want them to be just tearing everything up at the roots, but I think we're at a happy medium here. It was like the most recently grazed up here and it looks so much better than the backfield. <laughs> but also I think that's um, partially due to the fact that last year when we had our backfield bailed, we relied really heavily on our front fields and the calves were just con continuously rotated up here. And the front field has gotten the most manure and urine from the cows and the chickens. And so that's another reason it just made sense to get them back out here again. They're probably um, parked in the barn for two weeks. 